Hello, everyone. I'd like to propose a profound question that I came up with the other day, and that is, would you rather pay taxes today while you're still working and you have an income, or tomorrow when you're retired and your only income is the draw off of your retirement account? I'd like to cover some things today that show how I, my personal opinion, how the Roth and its benefits far outweigh the cost of the traditional account at a retirement age. Now, quick uh, oversight, I will be covering the Roth and traditional variants of an IRA and a 401k. An IRA, or the 401k, is the same as a TSP account. Those two accounts are a employer-based retirement account. Uh, some of the things that I will cover dealing with those two uh, style accounts is the contribution limits for the accounts. Withdrawal restrictions and benefits give you the million dollar example. If you had a million dollars, dot, dot, dot. Uh, and last but not least, some of the downfalls of the, these, account, the, these retirement accounts. First, I'd like to start out with the contribution limits. Uh, per the IRS's website, the contribution limits for a IRA style account is $6,000. For the 401k or TSP style account, the contribution limits for that is $19,000. Now keep in mind that if your employee gives has an employee 401k, uh, you potentially could contribute more throughout the year based on uh, whatever kind of matching program that they have at your particular company that you work at. Uh, you also can have that 401k with your employer and have a IRA on the side as a second retirement account. So you potentially could contribute $25,000 annually to your retirement. So start young, gain that compound interest, and uh, gain that money. Without further ado, I'm going to move on to the withdrawal benefits and restrictions for these accounts. Uh, the Both accounts allow you to take out uh, up to $10,000 for uh, from the account for first-time home buyer, uh, qualified first-time home buyer. Got to put the qualified in there because you can't buy your second, you can't buy your vacation home using your retirement account. Uh, <laughs> hardship, uh, such as disability, certain levels of unreimbursable medical expenses, uh, a pursuit of higher education, you can take that money out to pay for your uh, for college. The downfall, this is where we're going to compare them. With the traditional account, you are going to pay, you have to pay taxes on that withdrawal, that $10,000 withdrawal. So. You can withdraw up to $10,000, but then you got to pay that 22%. And for the rest of this video, we'll go off the 22% uh, tax bracket because that's currently where I did all my numbers and done all my calculations because uh, I'm in the 22% tax bracket. So with that in mind, the 22% tax bracket, you're going to lose $2,200 to the federal government for taxes and not to account for state taxes that may, depending on what state you live in, may potentially uh, get withheld. Uh, the catch with the Roth is that that $10,000 can be withdrawn, but it has to have le at least been five years from your initial contribution to the account. So you have to wait five years before you can potentially use that as a uh, down payment on a, a first time on your first home or medical expenses or educational expenses. Um, but the upside is you're not paying taxes when you withdraw that $10,000. So that $10,000 is still $10,000 when it gets handed to the bank for that uh, down payment on that house. Now on to the million dollar. If you had a million dollars when you were 59 and a half and you had a Roth account, how much money do you think you would withdraw from that account? $1 million. That's not accounting for potential 
uh, interest that could be earned on that million dollars. But if you were to withdraw it at one point in time, you have a million dollars. Now, if you had a million dollars in a traditional account, how much money do you think you would withdraw at one point in time if you tried to withdraw your whole million dollars? $880,000 maybe? So at the 22% on the 22% tax bracket, you would get taxed on that million dollars at a minimum of $220,000, depending on how you withdrew it. And I mean, if you withdrew little, a little bit at a time, you could potentially get down to the low, lower tax bracket and pay less taxes. But that means you got to withdraw for a longer period of time. I don't know about you, but I don't plan on living until I'm 365 years old. You know, I, that's probably how long it's going to take for you to withdraw that million dollars. Downfalls of the accounts, uh, like I previously stated with the uh, $10,000 for first time home buyer, uh, medical expenses and education, the downfall is with the Roth is you have to, it has to be at least five years before you can withdraw that money. Uh, with the traditional, uh, me personally, the big kick in the teeth was that at 70 and a half with a traditional account, you're required to withdraw so the government can collect on the taxes that you base you essentially just uh, postponed until a later date, but you will pay taxes on contributions and on the uh, interest earned. In conclusion, I covered contribution limits of both the Roth and traditional IRAs, 401ks, TSP variants of the accounts. Gave you the million dollar example of if I had a million dollars in my Roth, I'd have a million dollars. Uh, covered withdrawal restrictions uh, and benefits to both accounts. And to answer my initial question that I asked you at the beginning of this uh, speech, I personally would rather pay my taxes today while I have a constant income rather than tomorrow when I'm trying to live off of my retirement account, sipping my ties on a beach somewhere. Hey, Tahiti.